From phones to tablets to TVs, displays have become a super important part of our everyday lives. We use displays to connect with family and friends, for work and healthcare and entertainment. In fact, the average U.S. household contains around eight displays. So displays are all around us every day. But have you ever stopped to wonder, how do these things actually work? Well, there are many types of display in use today, all based on different technologies. If you've ever shopped for a TV, you've probably heard many of the common acronyms for them. But did you know that all displays, from the biggest stadium LED wall to the smallest smartwatch, have one thing in common? The pixel. Pixels are the basic building blocks of all displays. Every display is made up of thousands or millions of tiny pixels. Most smartphone customers are probably familiar with the metric pixels per inch. Phone makers play a game of one-upmanship to create products with ever higher PPI scores. So we've all heard that the more pixels per inch a display has, the sharper it will appear to our eye. But what exactly is a pixel? Short for picture element, each pixel is usually comprised of three colored subpixels, one each for red, green, and blue, or RGB for short. Why red, green, and blue and not cyan, magenta, and yellow, the colors commonly used for print media like magazines and newspapers? Two reasons. First, the color-sensitive cones in the back of our eyes, on our retina, have evolved to pick up light wavelengths that roughly correspond to red, green, and blue light. So it's reasonable that displays would follow suit. Second, light mixes additively, not subtractively like pigments. This means all colors mixed together make white light. Mixing red and green and blue turns out to be the most efficient way to make white light while also covering most of the colors we see in the natural world. Whatever the reason, the result of the choice of RGB for displays is that our entire digital content ecosystem has been built on these RGB building blocks. Whether you're watching a movie, working on a spreadsheet, taking a photo, playing a game, or video chatting with your family, every color you see has been broken down into a mix of red, green, and blue, and then recreated by your display. So literally everything you see on screen is made up of a mix of red, green, and blue. So how does that work in practice? Well, each pixel on a modern display is so small that unless you are really, really close to your TV, your eye perceives the mix of red, green, and blue at each pixel as a single point of color. Mixing red and green makes yellow, while blue and red combine to make purple, and so on. By mixing just those three colors in varying amounts, an individual pixel can create billions of unique shades. Stitch together around 25 million of those red, green, and blue subpixels to create 8.3 million RGB pixels, and you have a modern Ultra HD TV. So all content and most displays share the RGB pixel in common. But the way that they generate light to reproduce those RGB colors differs widely. There are dozens of confusing marketing acronyms used to describe these display technologies. Maybe you've heard of LEDs, or OLEDs, or QLEDs, or CRTs, or LCDs, just to name a few. For any display that makes its own light, all of these technologies fit into one of two categories for common consumer products, transmissive displays and emissive displays. As you can see, these two display types can be made using a wide variety of technologies. But the fundamental concepts are the same, regardless of the specific technology. So let's start with the basics. In transmissive displays, the pixels control light generated by a light source that is behind the pixel, called a backlight. In their off state, these pixels block light. And when they're on, they allow light to pass through. In an emissive display, pixels generate their own light with no need for a backlight. To demonstrate this concept a little more clearly, let's imagine a pixel is a window on the side of a house. In a transmissive display, the light in the house is always on, and the shutters are opened or closed at each pixel to let light through, producing an image at the front of the display. An emissive display is like turning the light in the room on or off at the light switch instead of using the shutters to control the light. If the shutters on a transmissive display aren't perfect light blockers, and they aren't, some light can leak through, leaving blacks not quite as dark or inky. While emissive displays turn completely black when the pixel is off, providing a boost in contrast. Of course, 
it's not entirely that simple. Modern transmissive displays, not to be outdone by emissive displays, have added the capability to selectively turn off the backlight behind groups of pixels. These displays are sometimes called direct lit, full array local dimming, or mini LED. They can have just as much contrast as an emissive display with dark, inky blacks in typical living room viewing conditions. Thinking about quality, whether a display is emissive or transmissive, the quality of light it produces is one of the most important factors in creating a great picture. Poor quality light will result in muddy or dim images regardless of the underlying technology used. Or, as we like to say around here, garbage in, garbage out. To understand, let's look at the light created by a typical LED LCD backlight. The LEDs in this display emit blue light, which you can see in the peak at the left of the chart. And then they're capped with a yellowish phosphor material that combines with the blue to create a spectrum of light that appears white to our eyes, even though it's composed of only two colors. We can see that the blue peak is very narrow, which is great for displays, but the phosphor produces a range of colors from cyan to yellow to infrared with very little energy in green or red. That's not great for an RGB display because the white light then passes through color filters at the display's subpixels to separate the light into red, green, or blue. These filters are not super precise, so what you end up with is orangey reds or yellowish green, which in turn makes all the millions of in-between shades a little less accurate too. An ideal light source for a display would produce only red, green, and blue light. So if we change that yellowish phosphor out for a mix of red and green quantum dots, we get a pure red, green, blue light source. Now, when the display asks for green, it gets green only not a muddy mix of cyan, green, and yellow. These pure colors make images more vivid and precise. They can make deeper, more saturated colors, and they also improve energy efficiency and brightness by not wasting energy producing those in-between colors that aren't really used by the display. And again, this applies to both emissive and transmissive displays. So now that we know a little bit about pixels, display construction, and light generation, Let's put it all together and look inside two common display technologies, a transmissive LCD and an emissive OLED. Starting with LCD, the first thing we see is the backlight. In this case, a mix of blue LEDs and quantum dots to generate perfect RGB white light. Next, we see the layers that make up an LCD pixel, including the liquid crystal materials that act as shutters to control the light. And finally, the RGB color filters that create color at each pixel. Now, let's check out an emissive OLED TV. Remember that pixels in emissive displays generate their own light. They can be really thin because they don't need a backlight, but they're still complex devices made up of lots of components. Here we can see the light generating layers inside of a 2021 OLED TV. Note that each pixel in these OLED TVs creates a mix of blue and yellow light before using color filters to shape the spectrum into RGB, a lot like the LED LCD we looked at earlier. Unlike most LCDs, OLED TVs add a white subpixel to RGB. For this reason, TVs with this technology are sometimes called white OLED or W OLED. Mixing in white with color helps improve brightness and efficiency at the expense of color accuracy. Starting in 2022, some OLED TVs are expected to use quantum dots for pure RGB colors. More on that in a future video. In theory, emissive displays should be the best performers due to inherent advantages in contrast and efficiency. But in practice, each of these display types has a mix of strengths and weaknesses that make them better suited for different applications. In general, transmissive displays are brighter, more colorful, more energy efficient for bright content such as office work and sports, and they don't suffer from burn-in. While emissive displays have the best contrast for dark room viewing, great off-angle viewing performance, and good energy efficiency for relatively dark content like movies. With that, now you know a little bit more about displays and how they work. Display technologies are improving every day at a faster and faster pace. 
LCDs are getting brighter with higher contrast by using mini LEDs and quantum dots, while emerging emissive display technologies could totally change the way displays are made. From quantum dot OLED hybrid displays to micro LEDs and emissive quantum dots, there's a lot to look forward to in the world of displays.